Welcome to the Irish and Celtic Music Podcast and happy St. Patrick's Month. This is show number 651 and I'm doing something a little bit different today. I got an email from Nick Hennessy. He suggested a track for the Irish and Celtic Music Podcast called Devils in the Sea. It was a great track, but it is a story because uh, Nick, in, in addition to be a singer, he's also a storyteller. And it's a long story. It's a 20-minute story. Now, a podcast, of course, can be as long as you want. So it didn't mean I couldn't necessarily put it in the regular show, but I decided to give it its own special episode and do a little highlight of Nick Hennessy and uh, his music as well. So we're going to start it off with a track called Girl in the Street from Nick Hennessy's album Pebble and Bone. springtime the sun was just rising and I looked from my window and what did I see but a beautiful woman down there on the roadside she was walking her dogs in the street next to And her blue eyes, they sparkled like jewels in the sea And she sang as she walked and her voice was so gentle That I fell for that girl from the street next to To see her, excuse me, I stumbled. Would you consider a date with a man such as me? You're the most beautiful woman that I've ever seen. You're all and more that a woman should be. a job and a fast car and plenty of money and you'd be seen as the queen that I know you to be I'd keep you so well in a lifetime of leisure if that's what it takes for you If the man that I loved wasn't tender with me Oh my heart, it was melting, her voice was like honey Then meet me tonight and it's tender She blushed, then she smiled, and then she There's no change on me I love her the more each day the sun rises And life 
lights the face of the girl from the street next to As I forgot to introduce myself, I'm Mark Gunn. I'm a Celtic musician and podcaster, and this is the Irish and Celtic Music Podcast. It's designed to promote independent Celtic musicians primarily. If you're in a Celtic band or if you love Celtic music, send an email to follow at bestcelticmusic.net. You can also go to celticmusicpodcast.com to check out the show notes. If you hear music you love, please support the artists. All right, it's time for Devils in the Sea by Nick Hennessy. There's a link to his SoundCloud page if you want to check it out. Duncan was alone. 
And now there was only one, living in that croft, in that narrow cove. He laid his mother to rest in the sea, and then returned and sat alone. And the weeks passed. And every day he'd be out on the boat, but when he returned, the house was so quiet. Where he left his bowl in the morning was where he found it when he came back. Everything, stone, still and silent, and it, it pressed on him like, like a weight of water. And the months passed, and then December came. And as the full force of the winter tide surged into the cove, the wind whipping off the foam-topped waves began to quiver and sing. The croft door was bolted, and Duncan sat alone in the chair staring into the flames of the hearth. But as the rain drummed the window, Duncan looked, and without his mother there to chide him, he got up, looked out through the glass, and he saw, out on the beach, close to the water's edge, a figure, a woman, and she was dancing. He rubbed his eyes. She was definitely there, a young woman, naked, leaping and twirling in the whistling wind, hips rocking like the sea, hair unfolding over her bare shoulders. Duncan couldn't take his eyes off her. He watched her for what seemed like an age, and then she stopped, quite suddenly. She reached down and picked up what seemed like a cloth or a coat. She spread it out on the ground at her feet, then lay down and rolled her naked body in it. And Duncan saw a seal then. He shook his head, looked again. It was a seal. The woman was a seal, heaving itself off the beach into the water. He watched as it swam off and disappeared in the foam, and the beach was empty. All that night he lay in his bed. As he closed his eyes, he could see her in his mind's eye, flickering, dancing like a flame. Next morning, as the wind sang, he looked out and saw her again, dancing, turning, twisting. He was transfixed by her. And then she stopped spread out the cloth on the sand, rolled her body in it, and once more that seal shuffled off into the sea. The next morning Duncan looked and watched, but this time his heart was pounding. He knew the tide would turn soon, the wind would fall silent and she would be gone. She was away up the beach by now, lost in her dance. Duncan threw back the bolt of the door, ran out down to the water's edge. He grabbed the cloth from the ground and ran back. He stuffed it into a hole behind the house, weighed it down with a stone, then ran back inside, shut the door and watched through the window. She was moving swiftly now across the sand, but she wasn't dancing. She was running in fear. This way and that, she ran and ran, searching everywhere for her seal skin. And when she couldn't find it, in desperation, she ran into the water, hurled herself into the foam, but the waves rolled her back. Again she tried, but again and again she was washed back to land. And finally, exhausted and cold, she sat on the ground, knees pulled up to her chest, wet hair clinging to her back, sobbing. The sound of her crying tore at Duncan, cut him deeper than the cold wind. He rubbed his tears with his fists. And then he saw, hanging on the hook of the back of the door, his mother's old woolen coat. He grabbed it and ran out to her. At first, when she saw him, she tried to get up and run away, but then she fell down, cold and tired. He looked down at her, so beautiful. Her eyes so green and deep, he loved her. She stared back at him. Then he wrapped her in the wool coat, picked her up in his arms and carried her home. He sat her in the chair and rubbed her hands and feet until she stopped shivering and until her sobbing died away. 
And then the tide turned, and the wind fell silent. And so there were two of them now, living in that croft, in the narrow cove. And at first the rough fibres of that wool coat itched and chafed her skin, so she'd pull it off, throw it down on the ground. But then, soon enough, the cold would come, and she'd shiver, and then she'd grab the coat once more and button it up, and, well, it wasn't long before she never took it off. By day, she walked up and down the beach, by the water, staring out across the sea. But come evening, she sat in the chair, staring with a fearful fascination at the flames leaping and dancing in the heart. But more than once she sought the warmth in Duncan's arms. And time passed, and soon her belly swelled. Month by month it grew and grew. And then one day, so big she could hardly walk, water puddled on the stone floor between her feet. So she lay on the bed, and then came the heavy weather. Caught up in the violent surges, Silently she pushed hard, teeth clenched, knuckles white round the twisted bedsheet. The ebb and the flow, the suck and draw, another wave, and then another, and another, and then a gripping and a gasping and a thrashing, and out came a baby, thrust out, a little wriggling girl. Duncan swept her up in his arms held her, all wet and shining like something from the sea. He wrapped her in a cloth and gave it to the mother, who nuzzled and fed her. And then there were three in that croft in the narrow cove. And although Duncan was mute and the mother was silent, the baby wasn't. She squealed and giggled, cried and gurgled all the time. Filling that little house with her chime and her chatter, it was pure music to Duncan's ears. And time passed, and the girl grew up, wandering the strand, peering into rock pools, staring out across the horizon. Her voice, shaped as much by soil and stone as wind and wave, she talked a language all of her own. Then one day, as Duncan was off selling his basket of fish in the village, she was playing behind the craft when she saw something beneath a stone. She touched it. It was soft, silky soft. She tugged at it hard and pulled it out. It was a coat or a skin, maybe. She took it to her mother, who was gutting fish inside. She held it up to show her the fish knife, clattered to the floor, and from the moment the mother saw it, all she heard was the roar of the waves. She snatched it from the girl and held it close to her face, and then looked out of the door to the sea. She walked straight out of the house, and the girl followed behind. The woman walked to where the waves broke on the sand. She looked far out, and then looked down at the skin in her hand and then looked at her daughter. She wrapped the skin around the girl's shoulders, but it slipped to the ground. She tried again, but it fell, again and again. The woman's eyes filled with tears. She looked out to the sea. Just then, Duncan, returning from the village with his empty basket, came to the path above the croft and saw he put his hands to his mouth to shout, to, to call out, to, to beg her to stay, but no sound came. The voice in his throat untuned as the wind. All he could do was watch as she unbuttoned a wool coat and let it fall from her naked shoulders. She held the girl's face in her hands and kissed it over and over, and then she spread the skin on the sand at her feet and lay down on it. She rolled over, and the girl saw her mother become a seal. And Duncan watched as the seal shuffled into the water and swam away. The girl cried out to her mother, but the seal kept swimming. She threw herself into the waves, trying to follow, but 
the sea rolled her back until she sat, her knees pulled up to her chest, soaking wet, shivering, her hair clinging to her back. Duncan ran down to her, looked at her, her deep eyes, his daughter. He loved her. He picked up the old wool coat, wrapped it around her, and picking her up, carried her back inside. And then there were only two living in the croft in the narrow cove. And from then, every day, Duncan and his daughter would be out on the boat, with the rise and fall, the ebb and the flow, the coming and the going. The sea was all they knew, whatever the weather, whatever the season, except for those three days in December, when the full force of the winter tide surged into the cove, and the wind, whipping off the foam-tipped waves, would quiver and sing, an unearthly sound. And for those three days, Duncan sat in the chair, staring into the flames of the fire. But the door wouldn't be locked, and outside on the beach, where the waves broke, two figures would dance, leaping, twirling, turning, their hair unfurling over their bare shoulders. Two women, the girl and her silent mother, I hope you enjoyed that awesome story. If you did, check out Nick Hennessy. He's at nickhennessy.co.uk. There will be a regular episode of the podcast coming out real soon. We're going to finish up with one more track. Anarchy Gordon by Nick Hennessy is from his album, A Rare Hunger. And he's broad, and 
he'd entice any woman that ever he saw. He'd entice any woman, and so he has done me, and I never will forget my love, Anarchy. Well, down comes a father, and he's standing by the door, saying, Genie, you're trying the tricks of a whore. You care nothing for a man who cares so much for thee. You must marry Lord Sultan and leave anarchy. For anarchy, Gordon, he's barely but a man. And though he may be handsome, tell me where are his lands? The Sultan's lands abroad. And his towers they run high. You must marry Lord Sultan and leave anarchy. With anarchy, Gordon, I'd beg for my bread before I'd marry Sultan with gold to my head. With gold. Gowns fringed to the knee, and I'll die if I don't get my love, anarchy. And you, the time my parents to church you may me bring, but unto Lord Sultan I'll never bear a son, to son or to daughter I'll never bow my knee. And I'll die if I don't get my love, anarchy. Well, Jeannie was married, and from church she was brought home. And when she and her maiden so merry should have been, when she and her maiden so merry should have been. She's run to her chamber, and she's crying all alone. Come to bed, my genie, my honey and my sweet, for to style you my mistress, it would be a treat. Well, it's mistress or genie, it's all the same to me. For in your bed, Lord Sultan, I never will lie. And down comes a father, and he's spoken with renown, saying, "You that are her maidens, come and loosen off her gown." Well, she fell down to the floor, so tight about his knee, saying, "Father, look, I'm dying." For the love of anarchy. The day the genie married was the day the genie died, and the day that young anarchy came home on the tide. And down come her maidens with a ringing. You've been so long. You've been so long. You've been so long on the sands. So long upon the sands. So long upon the flood. And they've married your genie, and now she lies dead. Take me by the hand and lead me to the chamber where my true love lies in. And he's kissed her cold lips until his heart has turned to stone. And he's died in the chamber where his true love lies in.
The Irish and Celtic Music Podcast is produced by Mark Gunley, Keltfather, and our patrons on Patreon. The show is edited by Mitchell Peterson with graphics by Miranda Nelson Designs. Visit our website to follow the show. You can find a link to all of the artists played in this episode. Todd Wiley is the editor of the Celtic Music Magazine. Subscribe to get 34 Celtic MP3s for free, plus you'll get seven weekly news items about what's happening with Celtic music and culture online. Best of all, you will connect with your Celtic heritage. Please tell one friend about this podcast. Word of mouth is the absolute best way to support any creative endeavor. Remember, read Reduce, reuse, recycle, and think about how you can make a positive impact on your environment. Promote Celtic culture through music at CelticMusicPodcast.com.